Appreciate it. Joining me now is CNN political commentators, Tara Setmayer and Amanda Carpenter, both former Capitol Hill communications directors. Uh, Amanda, let me start with you. The fact that, you know, we're talking about one of the leading presidential candidates did, in fact, once try to stab a friend a long time ago. And by the way, the candidate insists he did. What do you make of this? Is this much to do about nothing? Does it matter? It does matter because it is a central part of his biography. And the thing that puzzles me the most about this is not that reporters are asking questions, but that he seems baffled that reporters are asking questions. Ben Carson made a decision not to work with the CNN reporter on this story. He's paying a price for it, and he's paying somewhat of an unfair price because the story that Politico wrote later that questioned another element of his biography was not accurate. It was not fair, but now it's all sort of being conflated together and blowing up in his face, and you saw that intense reaction that he had. Listen, he is a first-tier presidential candidate who is in the lead. His campaign needs to know how to answer questions, both fair and unfair. And the amount of time it took for him to correct the political story, I mean, so many people were questioning what was going on online today. It just, he's not going to survive as a front runner if he can't answer questions. Tara, how do you see it? Uh, I agree with Amanda. I, I think there are several uh, narratives going on here. The, the biggest being that when you are a top tier candidate, you are going to be held to a different level of scrutiny, and you have to be prepared for that. This is the big leagues. And today, and what happened today, and the Carson campaign's reaction to it shows that they're not ready for prime time, mm -hmm. and that they have been relying on the platitudes of attacking the media and being a victim of biased reporting, which, listen, that's fair. As conservatives, we know there's a double standard. We've gone through it all the time. This isn't new, and it plays great to the GOP primary base and yeah so that's allowed cover for anything that may have been legitimate in that political story mm -hmm. or any of the questionable um details that Ben Carson has kind of changed you know with, with with these stories this isn't the first story remember there was questions about the uh the Popeyes robbery when he brought incident right. about uh, that he was a part of an armed robbery and told them in a Popeyes organization, I think you right? Want to talk to that guy. Right, you want to talk to the cashier. And right. then there was there was no record of that actually happening according to Baltimore police. So that was in question. Then his answer during the debate last week about Manatech, the supplement company, uh, he said he had no affiliation with them. Well, it turned out that in fact he did. He taped uh, testimonials, he gave paid speeches. They muddled up that response. They had to backtrack and backtrack. And now you have this one. So if you you need to have message discipline and if you are in the right then you have to have message dis discipline you can't keep giving the the media an opening to sit there and question your credibility and then turn it around and say and blame it on the media for questioning your credibility when you open that door Amanda do you think this actually hurts Dr. Carson I mean so far this campaign I mean you know has hurt Donald Trump the other leading outside candidate or, or hasn't what why should we think this would be any different with Ben Carson well he scored a political benefit today because Politico got their reporting so wrong when it comes to whether he was offered a scholarship or not a lot of people rallied by his side because it was Politico just went so far beyond the pale I'm actually worried about that because I think that political story damages the good questions other people are asking that need to be asked and he does need to be vetted but all of this kind of comes from a problem that we see again and again where he is not precise with his language. Exactly. Um, this pervades when it comes to policy proposals, when it comes to his biography. You have to be very precise. And when you're imprecise with your language, people are going to interpret it different ways. And this is something we keep seeing, and he has to find a way to correct it. It's but also, I don't think he's going to be able to it because it's gone on for so long. It's also interesting, Amanda, because some people might say, well, why are you focusing so much on his biography? He's not, because he is a, an outsider candidate, because he doesn't have a political record of, of votes, really what he has is his biography. That's what he's been running on. And, I mean, obviously his issues. Um, so that's why you know, all there is to, to kind of look at. Uh, we we got to leave you there. But Amanda, it's good to have you on. Amanda Carpenter, Tara Setmayer as well. Always good to have you. Just ahead, Ben Carson's latest efforts to court African-American voters. Can he win votes with a hip-hop ad? We'll hear from some of the voters the new ad is aimed at.